Why, a little while ago, your old boy Greg was on the internet's late at night and he tweeted a two-word phrase, a two-word phrase that the internet will not let him forget, and that phrase was Malortnog. And so today, I will rest from the aether, take it back from the Twitter, and create for you a Malortnog like none has ever been. And also, a few other unusual nogs right here on this old jolly old episode. This is the most amazing eggnog I think I've ever had. All right, so today on How to Drink, I'm gonna make some weird eggnogs. I don't really have recipes for any of these. I do have some ideas for recipes. It's kind of a workshop episode. I really don't know where this is going. The only thing I know is where it's going as far as spirits and the first one up is malort we're gonna make a malort nog first or try to i honestly i don't know if i can make that one work it's gonna be malort nog gin nog mezcal nog chartreuse nog which i actually think has a lot of promise and a tiki nog all right so let's talk about eggnog briefly and i'm gonna make my personal favorite recipe for eggnog a lot of people make an eggnog that's aged that's fine they do this whole process where they whip the eggs whites they combine it with creamed egg yolks that is a fine way to go i personally base my recipe off of i think it's called the baltimore eggnog which is a very old school traditional style of eggnog that you will find in Imbibe, which is David Wondrich's amazing and wonderful book that you should probably have a copy of. And if you don't, you can pick it up up here. It's a shake and drink. You can make it uh, a single serving eggnog in the shaker right there, right on the fly. It's, I like it a lot. I, I personally prefer it this way to the more aged, more heavy, sweeter, honestly, more desserty eggnogs. Both have their place. Uh, both are wonderful things. Here we have the Greg Nog. I like my eggnog. So our first eggnog to try to figure out how to make is Malortnog. If you're not familiar with Malort, this is a particularly disgusting bitter liqueur. It comes from the Chicago area. It's a type of besk, and it's a very bad example of besk as well. But even the best besks, even the best besks, are extremely bitter one note affairs. They are just straight, pure bitterness. That's all it is. It's 70 proof, so it's like a little shy of a full-blown liquor, as opposed to a liqueur. I don't know what I'm gonna do here. I know it's gonna have to have Malort, right? I have this weird notion that for some reason, if you had to pair Malort up with something else, Amaretto makes sense. I can't figure out what my, my reasoning is there. It's just an idea. The other thought I have that goes past that, a chocolate liqueur, in this case, Tempest Fugit Cacao, woo, the best. Or potentially a coffee liqueur, Mr. Black, the one I always use. I think what I'm gonna try to do is we're gonna do what I've often done on this show where I build by parts. I'll just keep getting it closer and closer till we have a spec rather than having to rebuild from scratch over and over again to get it right. It may not work. It may never work. I don't know. The thing is too, I don't wanna bury the Malort. I wanna make sure you can still taste the Malort in this drink, right? So I'm gonna start with what we have to have as base spirit here. I'm gonna say we can do a light pour of our base spirits, just a personal, I'm gonna say I'm allowed, I'm gonna do an ounce and a half of Malort. I feel like this is the Grinch's nog. Grinch nog? Satan's nog? Satan's nog. Chicago nog. Chicago nog. More like Chicago wig nog. Oh, is that how they talk out there? <laughs> so I'm gonna say that we need at least a half an ounce of amaretto. Let's start there. Ho, 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 ho. Making Christmas bad. All right, now I'll just taste as we go. Whew. Powerful bitterness. Half an ounce is simple for sure. We're not quite sweet enough for a nog. Give that a taste. A little less medicine-y. I definitely still get that lingering bitterness, but boy, I don't know. That's actually a lot better than I would have thought. <laughs> is the chocolate cheating, Meredith? Is it too much? Ratio-wise, we're gonna add a very small pour of this. We're gonna add a quarter ounce. This is the Tempest Fugit Cacao. It's uh, pretty potent stuff. I don't think we're any more than that. Hey, I just wanna point out too, a lot of these spirits, maybe all of these spirits, are gonna be available at Curiata, drink.curiata.com. Check out the link in the pinned comment. Check out the link up here. Uh, we have a great deal going with them for us and for you. You can get free shipping if you order anything. I think it's over $200. Most of these bottles, if not all of them, should be available there. Holidays are coming up. Maybe you wanna get a gift for somebody. Maybe you wanna get a gift for yourself. Check it out. Let's see where we're at here. I think we've got it. All right, so to nog this up, I want to add to it, first off, one whole egg. That's a rule. There's going to be a whole egg in every one of these. If you're not comfortable with that, this isn't the episode for you because we're going to go through a lot of raw eggs today. I think I want to go a little floofy. We're going to do one ounce of heavy cream. Ooh. Yeah, 
It's all right, it's a nog. I will dry shake that quickly. Let's get some ice in there. Oh, and about that, some people are gonna say, hey, ice in eggnog, isn't eggnog meant to be served hot? Not really, no. Traditionally, eggnog is a cold drink. Tom and Jerry is a hot drink. I've never made Tom and Jerry on the show, I don't think. Um, Tom and Jerry has been described as being like pancake batter that you drink that's hot. I, uh, I don't need that. Okay, here we go. I hope it's good. <laughs> I'm scared. I'm gonna put this lovely glass here. This is like a uh, kind of an Irish coffee glass or something. As a rule, nutmeg. Is the orange a rule? Or... Well, the orange is just a thing I do on my eggnog. It's an affectation. I wouldn't say it's a standard eggnog thing at all. Um, it's something I like. Oops. Certainly looks like an eggnog. And I hope it's good because I don't want to do it again. It's good. That is bizarre. <laughs> It has a, a lot of evolution, but mostly it tastes like a cherry cordial, like a cherry and chocolate kind of thing. But the Malort is not hidden. And actually there's a beat. It opens with cherry and then it goes to Malort. It goes to Malort, but the Malort is being moderated by this chocolate. And it kind of actually, because Malort is so bitter, but we've thinned it way out. With the chocolate, which is very sweet here, it's a chocolate liqueur, you actually get a kind of a dark chocolate thing from them combining kind of has like a, a little bit of burn to it, a little bit of spiciness, but actually it mostly presents as cherry into dark chocolate, then back through some cherry, almond, sweet and chocolatey flavors with the bitterness of the Malort underneath it. The Malort is never buried entirely, nor is it completely indominant, right? Like I think that that's actually pretty good. There is one argument that maybe this is underproof, right? Cause Malort's only 70 proof. Other than that, it's liqueurs. But I don't think you need an eggnog to be rocket fuel. An eggnog can be rocket fuel, and you would not be wrong to make it rocket fuel, but I don't think you need it to be rocket fuel. I'm happy to call this an eggnog. Now, I happen to be a person who can drink Malort without flinching. I am told that that is rare. <laughs> most people find it to be the most disgusting. I've, I've heard it referred to as the succubus's piss, the devil's taint sweat, the holy Moses's toe jam, whatever you want to call it. I don't, it, doesn't, it just strikes me as a, a standard dry bitter to me. So the real test is Meredith must try it. And if she finds it acceptable, and let me know if you don't, by the way. If she finds it to be a Nagi, Nagi-ness. Now Meredith is from Chicago area. I don't think she's enthusiastic about it. Yeah, the bitter is staying too long. And with the milk, it's making me, like, it's. It's tough, it's tough, it's tough. It's tough to make him a Lord Nog. Well, here's what I, It's I? good, you get that, oh. once you get that chocolate. Okay. All the, uh, the sins of the Malort are, are sort of, gone. I don't want to get rid of the bitterness because that's what makes it Malort. No one could say that that hid the flavor of Malort. It is present. You know what I think it might be missing? It's some cinnamon. I happen to have these great Ceylon cinnamon sticks. These are not like wood. If you've ever seen a recipe that calls for you to break up cinnamon or something like that, these crumble instantly in your hand. They're really light. They have a really bright cinnamon flavor and you can just grate them a little bit into something. Now we have some fresh cinnamon in there and why not? Ooh. What a powerful, powerful smell. Garnish it with the whole thing, darn it. Well, it certainly doesn't mind it being in there. I'll tell you that. I like it. I actually do like it. I know that Meredith doesn't like it, but I personally think that what this eggnog does is what a good cocktail should do, which is take the base spirit, put it on a little pedestal, modify it, stretch it out, make it more palatable, put it with flavors that help it go along and accentuate it, things that like, yeah, that bitterness, what does that bitterness go with? And it's drinkable. As much as she wasn't a huge fan, she did go back for a few sips without gagging. And that's better than most people can do with Malort, so. It is Malort Nog, no question. No question, yeah. The Malort's there. Am I weird? I want you to try this. I know I am weird. People are gonna be like, that's not my Malort, that's not my Malort. Get yourself a bottle of Malort and try Malort Nog. Try Chicago Naga. Chicago Naga. See how the Chicago Naga works for you. Malort Nog down. I don't know, I think we got it. The Chicago Naga is ready to go. Up next is gonna be Gin Nog right after this. I've never made or seen a Gin Nog. I don't know how it's gonna go. <laughs> Sounds bad. Let's give it a shot right after this. So a gin nog, hmm, that's a tricky one. Well, we know we need gin. I got this Monkey 47. I have this uh, Bowling and Birch gin. I think this makes more sense, but it's a London dry style gin, You're just splitting hairs. I'm gonna start with an ounce and a half of my gin. Maraschino. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna start with a half an ounce, but I could easily see myself amping that up. I'm gonna go with a half an ounce of simple. Nothing, no reason not to. We know we're making an eggnog. All right, there's no surprises in here. This is just, Gin, simple, and maraschino. Hmm. I wonder, 
Oh God, it's so crazy. I wonder if Fernet Branca would do that in a very small amount. Ooh, I mean, we're going for Rebel Eggnogs here. I don't know. I, I'm feeling insane. Let's do a half an ounce of Fernet Branca. Mm, medicinal. So we're building towards something I've decided is called Green Man Nog. Brilliant. <laughs> it might be amazing. Uh, maybe we'll throw in a half an ounce of cognac, but honestly, I, I don't know if I can improve. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah, all right, I'll throw in a half an ounce of cognac. That'll be nice in there, but <laughs> I feel like I should be like intoning some ancient spell now. You know, an egg of the hen. Half an ounce of the cream of the mother. Half an ounce of the calf's sweet milk. <laughs> The green man. How do you guys like my throat singing? I think this is ready, ready to shake. We're gonna shake this. Let's dry shake it very quickly. Now we're going to put some ice in there. Aye, ice fresh from the fjords. <coughs> now obviously Fernet Branca is an Italian liqueur and I'm playing up this whole like green man thing, but it does have that taste. It's flavor, it's, it's look, it's vibe. This might now be a, by the way, a Fernet Branca more than a gin nog, but there's very little Fernet Branca by ratio, so. Here we go. Green man knock. Little nutmeg. Let's see if this mystical brew is up to the challenge of helping you make it through the solstice, the burning of the Yule, to awaken the sun. I'm awestruck. I find that to be a delightful nog. Tastes heavenly, heavily of raisins and currants, herbal, Mossy, green, grassy notes, sages, and uh, rosemary in the moldering ferns of time where the, where the mist hangs low in the forests. I like it very much. There's something about that combination of Fernet Branca and gin that really evokes deep, dark, old growth forest of trees that you can't get your arms around. I don't know. That's fun, man. That's super duper 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 cool. Right now. At this moment, for this holiday season, I like this better than my regular Greg Nog. <laughs> you outnogged the Nog. Yeah, I outnogged the Nog. Damn. You know, that's things you fuck around, you find cool shit. You fuck around and find out. That's what happens. Around here, it's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> These next two I'm very excited about. You are? Mm -hmm. Mara's really excited about me having to make mezcal nog. I'm kind of dreading it. So there is a recipe for mezcal nog. It shows up in Imbibe. I made it previously in a, uh, what we used to call a chaser episode. A shot on like my iPhone in my kitchen in New York. I wasn't very impressed with that recipe at the time either. So maybe in the spirit of that recipe, let's see if we can come up with a decent mezcal nog. I being a guy who's not much for mezcal to begin with, by the way. Okay, so I have some artisanal fancy mezcals. These are all good mezcals, I wanna be very clear. I feel like these are kind of unfair to use. One, because they're super potent in flavor, and two, because like they're not, they're not something you're gonna, that's like very buttery on the nose. You're, oh, that actually smells delicious right now. Right now, at this particular moment, that smells amazing. They're not something that you're going to probably find in your local liquor store. These are the Vida Del Maguey mezcals. This is like their regular mezcal. This is a creme de mezcal. This is like sweetened, like a cream liqueur. I'm going to do something. I'm going to hold on to the crema. I'm going to pour with this. So let's start with this guy. I'm going to go with an ounce of this for now. Um, and now I'm going to do a half an ounce of the crema. De Maguey Crema de Mezcal. All right. Well, keeping in the spirit of a mezcal nog, I feel like we've got to sweeten this one with raw agave nectar. This is the very finest raw agave nectar from Whole Foods. So let's add half an ounce of agave and let's see where we're at as far as sweetness and mezcaliness goes. So that's all that's in there right now. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> Hold on a second here. I think I want to start with a half an ounce of dry curacao. I could go to an ounce on this one. Ooh. Another quarter ounce. Maybe three quarters of an ounce. Oh, no. Oh, oh. Thankfully, the, oh. nog, the nog has remained intact. That was miraculous. It's a Christmas miracle. Feliz Navidad. I think this is going to work. It's simple. I know it's simple. I know there's not a lot going on in there. That doesn't mean it's wrong. One egg, three quarters of an ounce of heavy cream. No reason not to dry shake. 
All right, ready? Just to mix it up, we're gonna put this one into a double old fashioned glass since I've been using the same glass again and again. Looks like Nog, the customary nutmeg. Let's see how this Mezcal Nog came out. That is a thing of joy. That is a thing of beauty. What a lovely, lovely thing we have done here. I'm not gonna lie, it's sweet. It's, it's pretty high on the sweetness scale. But if you're making an eggnog, I kind of think that's what a lot of people want. The smoky mezcaliness of it is just right. It's so wonderfully moderated by that orange liqueur that is um, just bringing this warmth. Oh, what a joyous drink. I don't think this needs a single thing. Meredith, try it and tell me what you think. I'm, it tastes so good. The aftertaste is very pleasant. It lingers. Oh. Hell fucking yeah, that take is... Take it with you, it's, it's glorious. That's my This is nog. the one that goes behind the camera. <laughs> Let's find out about chartreuse snog uh, right after this. I don't have anything to drink, because it was so good she took it away. <laughs> See you guys it's in a minute. Ask me my favorite drink. Well, what's your favorite drink? Eggnog. Oh, is Mezcal. it? Mezcal. It is stunning. <laughs> what's in that? All right, we're back. We're having a good time around here. We're all nogged up in our noggins. We're gonna make a chartreuse nog. I don't know what the heck goes into a chartreuse nog, but I feel like it's a crazy and good idea. I have been on a real chartreuse kick lately. Um, I feel like chartreuse cannot go wrong. It just can't. Or I'm gonna start with one ounce of chartreuse because it's not cheap. I think we're going to use some cognac here. I'm gonna use a half an ounce of cognac. Definitely goes with my chartreuse vibe. Now we're going to sweeten half an ounce of simple. That's tasty. I don't believe that that would make a bad eggnog. I do think that a quarter ounce of creme de cacao would be lovely in that. Oh my God. Dare I? Two dashes of Angostura bitters. Uh, I'm gonna do my half and half move. We're gonna do a half an ounce of heavy cream, half an ounce of milk. Let's dig it up. Ice. I gotta tell you, Meredith, I haven't really used my spit bucket enough. Yeah. Put it into this lovely brandy snifter. It's so regal, so refined, so ancient. Bit of nutmeg, chartreuse snog. Let's see how it is. That's very good. It's honestly like less interesting to me than green man nog. It's very good. It's just less interesting. I do love me some chartreuse. It could use with like another beet in its evolution because right now it is sweet, chocolate, but briefly herbal wilderness into black pepper. I always get a very strong black pepper note in chartreuse. I assume it must be part of its mixture. It kind of finishes on that chartreuse green black pepper kind of thing with a nice creamy texture all the way through. It's just right on that front. Angostura is, it was very good on the spoon. It's kind of disappearing in there now. If I throw Ango on top of it, it's gonna take over. It will become an Angostura drink. I don't know if there's anything I can add to it that will make it more of itself without it ceasing to be what it is, if that makes any sense. God, that smells like, that smell reminds me of the barracks at Fort Dix that I used to stay at when I was on weekend trips with ROTC. Let's pour it into the drink. We're gonna try that. We're gonna try an Amaro Montenegro. We're gonna do, I'm gonna start with a quarter ounce. No, I like that. Yes. That added, that opened up the whole evolution. That changes it dramatically. Now you get this cinnamon spicy and herbal note right up front. That turns into the black pepper. That turns into chocolate. Oh, that finish when the, when the, the chartreuse really comes through at the very end and it comes out at almost full strength. It's like a ray of sunshine piercing through these other flavors. It makes me think of like Monty Python when like the clouds would part in the animations and like ah! the god, god beams would come down and stuff. And then he would stomp on people with his feet or something. I don't know, I, I think it's pretty dagnobbed cool. This is more accessible than the Green Man Nog, but just as good. All right, we got one more Nog to make. We're gonna make a Tiki Nog next. Uh, and you might be thinking of Coquito. Uh, Coquito is a whole other episode of How to Drink, and I'm gonna put a link to it up there and in the pin comment below. Nope, this is Tiki Nog, uh, right after this. Well, we come at last to this, my friends. We're gonna make a Tiki Nog. Ooh, my zombie Nog. My notes for this are complicated. My notes say coconut rum. My notes say chocolate or coffee liqueur. My notes say Angostura. My notes say filet 
hearing them. My notes say OFTD, and they're all question marks. So we got John D. Taylor's Velvet Falernum. This is the Falernum that exists. You can make your own. I don't recommend it because the last time I tried, it went all moldy on me. Falernum is a tiki staple. It is a liqueur made from rum. What does it taste like? Let's find out. Tangy, beautifully citrusy lime. It's almost like a lime cordial with some extra cinnamon and some other spices in there. It's, it's a very nice ingredient. This is the best coconut rum I've ever had, Coconut Cartel. It is a rum that is backproofed, I think, with coconut water, and it just tastes like toasted coconuts. It doesn't taste like suntan lotion or anything like that. I think it's just Guatemalan rum that's been deproofed with coconut water instead of some other kind of water. So what do it need to be? What, would it, what do it need to be? It need to be, it needs to be high proof, because that's like a tiki thing. It needs to have tropical flavors. It can't really have fresh juices because just about any citrus juice we add to it will destroy it. It'll curdle it, right? It can have unusual syrups and flavors, things like that. Let's see what we can do with it. This one actually might be the most daunting of the list other than the Malort Nog. We're gonna pull out all the stops here. We're gonna do an ounce and a half of this coconut rum. Now we're gonna reach for my old friend OFTD. That's old fashioned traditional dark from Mr. Plantation Room. I think we wanted a whole ounce of that. I don't know why I suddenly got to be a, uh, a prospector. So this is St. Elizabeth Allspice Dram. Does it go in here? I don't know, but it might. That's another tiki staple. Oh yes, it does. Half an ounce of this, maybe even three quarters. That is strong. Half an ounce of um, orgeat. That's spicy. That is spicy in a way that burns. Um, it's gonna come way down though when we start adding milk and heavy cream and all that stuff to it, so. Oh, oh, chinola. So I said we couldn't get fresh fruit in here for a variety of reasons, but we can use fruit liqueurs. This is chinola. Uh, this is a very nice passion fruit liqueur. There's another one, it's called Passoa. Um, this one is, uh, I don't know, I like it better. Mm -hmm. We'll start with a quarter ounce of this. Another quarter. So a total here now of three quarters of an ounce. Yep. That's just right. Boy, I don't know. I kind of hesitate to add additional sweetness to it. Um, I don't think it's a bad idea though, but it is oh so fun right now. We're done. One whole egg, half an ounce of heavy cream. That's it. Not gonna do any milk or anything like that on this one. A little dry shake, get some ice. I'm gonna crack all of this ice. We don't need a big cube. In fact, crushed ice would be fine. Thank God that was empty. We won't be needing our strainer. We're gonna dump the whole thing in. Yeah, it looks like Christmas to me. We're gonna grate a little fresh nutmeg. We're going to take two of these guys. Very carefully, I will saturate these with OFTD. As you can see, it's very careful. <laughs> Such precision. Such intense <laughs> precision, yes. Take two of these cinnamon sticks. And I'm doing this because I don't have another way to do it. Okay, I'm inventing this on the fly. This is fine. <laughs> Place these two guys between the cinnamon sticks. All right, so this is a dredger filled with like just regular ground cinnamon. Um, you can see it's got a screen top. Screen top's overkill. You don't need a screen top. A regular top is fine. This just happens to be what I have. Uh, we've got our two sugar cubes. We're gonna set them on fire. Now we've got a nice little cinnamon fire going and we'll just dress that. And there you have our tiki uh, nog. I'm gonna drop my two sugar cubes in and my cinnamon sticks and that's it. I think we're all done there. Let's see how this tiki nog came out. I like it a lot. You do get coconut. It's like a, t a coconut, all spicy, borderline chocolatey flavor. And then passion fruit, very mild. Every flavor is sort of moderating each other. It's, nobody is coming out front and saying hello and screaming at you. It's a very nice drink. It's a very mellow drink. Does it really feel like a tiki drink? You know, I'm not really sure. Uh, to be perfectly honest with myself here, it certainly is presented as a tiki drink. I mean, I, you couldn't be more so. Oh wow, that's cool. I got a nice little creamy kind of passion fruit note there just now. It's a tough fit as a tiki drink as any eggnog would be. I think it's a good nog. I think it's a fun nog. I don't know if I love it as a tiki drink. Maybe it just needs to be sweeter. I'm gonna try an extra half an ounce of simple in there to see if that wakes it up a little bit. 
it's really creamy. It's super duper frothy. Um, more so than the other ones, honestly. Half an ounce of simple. That brings it out. It was, I was debating it too. When I was adding that extra half an ounce or quarter ounce of the orgeat, I was like, you know, this is probably not gonna do what I want it to do in terms of sweetness. But the extra half an ounce of simple does, it brings us there. Now, ooh, yeah, now you get this like baking spice, um, very good fruit cake kind of thing with the passion fruit in there. It brings out some fruit notes, you know? Demerara kind of, and the rum funk is buried. No rummy funky. But you do get this kind of, um, this allspice, clove, and cinnamon thing for sure. Give it a shot. Super fun. It is coconutty. It is creamy. It is allspice, baking spice, baking demerara sweetness. It has a late arriving passion fruit finish that is, ew, it sends shivers up your spine. <laughs> it's divine. That passion fruit makes it. It does, right? So good. It's so cool. Like if I had that as an ice cream flavor. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's tough to say. I mean, it's basically unrecognizable as an eggnog, but technically it is. <laughs> it is delicious. I gotta tell you, I did not think that this was gonna go this way. I really thought these were gonna be really unsalvageable bad ideas and every single one was at the very least salvageable they came out great i love them all the tiki nog took a little bit more war work than the others and they're all very very different you know this is going to fill a different niche than the green man's meal they're just not the same thing but they are still all nogs and so i stand by that apparently and this is news to me you can make a nog out of anything i had no idea just about i mean we i really this was a far flung we started with malort uh, Greg Nog, you know, we did them all, so. I feel like you probably think I'm lying that I didn't plan this, but I didn't plan this. I don't know what else to say. If I had planned this, the reaction of the Malort Log would have been like, Ugh! it would have been awful because that's a great reaction, but it wasn't. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Um, it has been a blast making all these Nogs with you. I'm on TikTok, Twitter, and Twitch. I'm on Instagram, and I'm on Patreon. That might be my favorite favorite specialist one because that's the one where you help me make the show with money so thank you for that in the meantime if you want any of these boozes that we use on this shoes is uh go check out curiata at drink.curiata.com well, i'll be back very soon with another episode of how to drink and i will see you then until then here are four things that i want you to know about they might be episodes they might be links they might be a button to subscribe i don't know off the top of my head but here they are. I've been making this show for seven years. There's a lot of show you haven't seen, probably. Check it out. I swear to you, I'm not really a vampire.